The New York Knicks beat the Toronto Raptors last night, 136 to 130. And we're going to break down that game. We'll go over the highlights. I'll share my opinions on the stats and everything following that Eastern Conference matchup. But I want to go back to a report from Fred Katz of The Athletic. He pretty much mentioned that following the loss of the Bucks last week, following the loss of the Boston Celtics, there was some discontent in the New York Knicks locker room. This is what Fred Katz said on the Knicks Film School podcast. Shout out to Jonathan Macri and everybody over there at KFS. They do a great job. Check them out. Katz said this, the Knicks lose to Milwaukee and Quentin Grimes makes his comments about not having the ball and there was some discontent in the locker room. I'm not reporting that the Knicks all hate each other. That's not the case, but there was definitely some discontent in the Knicks locker room. Josh Hart made it clear he was not happy with the lack of touches. I don't think Quickly is thrilled with getting 24 minutes per game. I don't think Dante DiVincenzo is thrilled he's playing six fewer minutes than he did last year for the Golden State Warriors. And this is kind of the problem that we all thought the New York Knicks were going to run into. This was even a problem last year before they made the rotation changes where Cam Reddish and Evan Fournier were out. The Knicks have a lot of mouths to feet. They are a true nine-man rotation. Even with Mitchell Robinson out, Deuce McBride has stepped into the rotation with Emmanuel quickly not playing last night. And when you just boil it down to the facts, there's not many teams in NBA history in the starting lineup that have three lefties that all like to drive left and operate in the same space. Jalen Brunson said last week that that's just kind of what it is right now. A lot of players on the Knicks do the same thing, specifically him. R.J. Barrett, and Julius Randle, and he said he just needs to do a better job of getting Quentin Grimes the ball. So it's a clunky fit for the New York Knicks. And when I watched that game on Friday where the Knicks lost to the Boston Celtics, it was the first time in Jalen Brunson's career where I truly felt he was disengaged. He looked checked out. He looked like Reggie Bullock when he was just sitting in the corner and waiting for an opportunity to let one fly from deep off the catch. He wasn't initiating the offense. The offense wasn't being run through him. And it really felt like to me that Jalen Brunson was not really locked in and somewhat looked check out, checked out in that loss versus Boston. Also, RJ Barrett has shown frustration time and time again. Go back to the game earlier this week. There was a fast break or Julius, it was against the Boston Celtics, excuse me, on Friday. Julius Randle had a fast break and he either could have A, tossed it off to RJ Barrett, B, dumped it off to Dante DiVincenzo, or hit C, a cutting Mitchell Robinson, or D, a wide open Jalen Brunson. R.J. Barrett has shown frustration. When he's been pulled out of games late in the fourth quarter, we've talked about it on the show. He'll go to the bench and throw his hands up and be like, why are you taking me out? A lot of players on this team are having to juggle kind of their ego a little bit, I would say, because there's so many players that have to play minutes. And also, if you're a highly competitive player, and you're a high, strong athlete like a lot of these guys, you don't like being taken out in pressure-filled situations. And R.J. Barrett wants to be a closer. He's shown frustration. Quentin Grimes has showed frustration. Fred Katz said this in a write-up for The Athletic just last week. There are people inside the Knicks front office who understand that a too-many-guy situation could be brewing, according to league sources. And this type of stuff happens when you start to lose games and when you consistently lose to teams that are better than you right now. Every loss the Knicks have suffered this season is against a team that sits above 500 right now. What they need to do is just keep the main thing the main thing. Every player needs to take a little bit of a step back, swallow their pride and ego a little bit, and do whatever they have to do for the betterment of the basketball team. I will say this, winning solves absolutely everything. Knicks won the last two games, and they've been happy. I mean, it's that simple. Everyone looked happy last night, and I love that everyone prior to the game kind of wore a little Mitchell Robinson gear. Everyone showed Big Mitch, Big 23, a lot of love, who's going to be out for 8 to 10 weeks due to ankle surgery. You see Grimes and McBride and Julius and Hartenstein, as well as Dante DiVincenzo supporting Mitchell Robinson. I will say this, though. When you watch this team, there's definitely, I would say, a clashing of personalities a little bit. There was reporters in the offseason that said there's really two teams within the Knicks roster. He talked about the Villanova guys, and he talked about the group led by R.J. Barrett and Julius Randle. So, I think it's something to monitor going forward. I don't think that they hate each other. Fred Katz said they didn't hate each other, but I will say this. It's been pretty evident that some people, in my opinion, don't love the idea of the way the Knicks are playing right now, especially through Julius Randle. And he could be a very frustrating player. Are you concerned about the Knicks locker room? Let me know what you think. Type Y free S 
type end for no. I'm not concerned yet, but I could definitely see a situation where this could be a bigger concern going forward. Coming up next, we're going to break down the Knicks win last night over the Toronto Raptors. Big game from Julius Randle. R.J. Barrett played his best game since the migraines. Jalen Brunson had nine assists but seven turnovers. But at the end of the day, you won a basketball game against a pretty solid team in the East. We'll break that down. But first, I got to give a huge shout-out to today's sponsor, Factor. Go to factormeals.com slash KnicksChat50 and use the promo code KnicksChat50. And Factor will hook you up with 50% off. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, flavorful meals to fuel you on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to-dos. If you live a busy lifestyle like I do, you work a lot of hours, you work a lot of nights, you don't want to go to the grocery store, really you don't have time to go to the grocery store, don't have time to prep your meals, you don't want to cook, and you don't want to do the dishes because your roommate has dirty dishes in there, get hooked up with Factor. And save yourself 50% off with the promo code NixChat. 50. Head to factormeals.com slash NickChat50 and use code NickChat50 to get 50% off. That's code NickChat50 at factormeals.com slash NickChat50 to get 50% off. I love Factor. I just feel like a way more responsible person taking care of myself, taking care of my time a little bit better. Get hooked up with them. That link will be clickable down in the comments and description of today's video. <clears throat> Julius Randle was absolutely awesome on the offensive end last night for the New York Knicks. He looked like a man on a mission. 34 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists. It's the efficiency though that I love from Randall. I also love the play where he beat the guy off the bounce baseline. He went and dunked it. He hung on the rim. He did get called for a technical, which if we were live, I would have been absolutely pissed off at. But then he got in the face of the fans. And then he got in the face of the players and he was like, I'm playing with energy today. Hung on the rim. It was, ah! it was one of those numbers. Good to see Randall show some emotion. He's an easy target at times and for obvious reasons, and well, honestly, I think deserving reasons, but it's always good to see Julius Randle play the way he did against a top team like the Raptors of the Eastern Conference. I also love that R.J. Barrett seems to be finding a little bit of a groove. He had a really good start to the season, then he missed like four or five games to a migraine, and he struggled to find his footing and his efficiency, but he did that just last night, 27 points on 52.4% from the deck, and I love when he continues to knock down that outside shot. If he could just be a league average three-point shooter, he is going to be effective, an effective player in this league. He was that last night, knocking it down in a 37.5% clip. Jalen Brunson, I would say, had kind of a sloppy game. I mean, the raw stats look great, right? 21 points, 9 assists, 58% from the field, over 60% from downtown. Very cool to see him get back on track from downtown, struggling in the play in, play in the in-season tournament against the Bucs and the Boston Celtics. But too many turnovers last night. Seven turnovers for Jalen Brunson. I know he had nine assists, and we love it when he stacks up those assists and gets closer to 10. But at the end of the day, nine assists on seven turnovers is not great work. And I think he's battling with an injury. Obviously, the ankle was hurting him. He looked a little bit hobbled. I wouldn't mind him taking off a game or two to get right and just kind of refocus and lock in as this season really starts to ramp up with the Christmas Day matchup against the Bucks right around the corner. Josh Hart did what Josh Hart does, man. It's, I don't understand how anybody can hate on this guy. Is he the best three-point shooter? No. Is he the most skilled basketball player? No. Is it always the prettiest experience when you watch Josh Hart play basketball? No. But when the guy off the bench gives you 16 points, 8 assists, 7 rebounds, 75% for the field, and 3 for 3 from downtown, I don't understand anyone that ever says a bad word about him. He plays his butt off, he plays winning basketball, and he does everything he possibly can on the court to help the Knicks win, and he was a big part in that last night. Probably my favorite storyline of the game, though, was seeing Quentin Grimes regain his confidence, and be a part of this offensive game plan. No Emmanuel quickly last night, and I feel like Quentin Grimes really benefited from that. Not saying it's Quickly's fault. I think the move to the bench will give more opportunities for a guy like QG. He had 19 points, 11 shots. I don't remember the last time he shot 11 shots in a game. 5 of 7 from downtown. Good to see Quentin Grimes find a little bit of a groove. We said it when he got benched. We're going to find a lot out about the player he is. And I feel like he's taken that challenge. He had another chip to his shoulder. And now he's playing the best basketball of the season for himself. I want to continue to see him be aggressive. We saw him attack closeouts last night. Really proud of the way Quentin Grimes played last night. So when I went and looked 
on the internet earlier today, I saw that Las Vegas and the casinos have updated the New York Knicks win total for this year. It's now at 45 and a half wins. So I want to ask you, will the Knicks win more or less games than 45 and a half? Type O for over, type U for under. I'm going to go with over. I think we're going to win closer to 50 games. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. As always, I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate you guys for making time, uh, taking time out of your day to rock and roll with us here on New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. We're going to be live on the channel Wednesday night for a Knicks watch party. It's a late night game on the East Coast. All the real ones will be there. Subscribe, turn your notifications on, and let's go Knicks.